everyone this is Elias from Revmatch Media and today we're going to be taking a look at the Land Rover Defender 90 first edition. Now this thing is going to be a lot of fun. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So we get to the front and we can see it's definitely a Land Rover and it's clearly the Defender. Now I love this front end. It looks so so nice. First of all the headlights look incredible, the LED headlights, and I do love the black bezel it has, and the fact that it's kind of like sunken into this, to this um, design here. Right now, we do have it at the highest off-road setting, so there is a lot of clearance, as you can see, and the approach angle is a lot. <laughs> There's a huge approach angle with the Defender, especially at the, at the top height. Now, my favorite thing about this is right down here, and that is the front-facing camera. The camera system in this is unbelievable. You have so many different views, uh, some that even just show you like from the angle. It's so, it's crazy how it's able to use all the cameras and basically put the, the SUV or the Land Rover in, a, in the spot so you can see how you park. It's really, really good. But yeah, crystal clear, not just the cameras themselves, but also on the display. And yeah, like I said, there's so many different views uh, with this. It makes this big vehicle so easy to drive. So you have that. And we do have the fog lights down here. And yeah, we have some little cooling aspects here because uh, underneath the hood, there's uh, something special with this. Well, let's go ahead and check it out. We get under the hood and we have a three liter inline six cranking out 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque, all going through an eight speed auto and their all wheel drive system. Now we take a look at this and there's not much to it, but looks are extremely deceiving with this because to get those power numbers out of this three liter six cylinder, this has a turbocharger. But wait, there's more. This has a supercharger. But wait, there's more. This has a mild hybrid system. Yes, it actually has all three. It's like Land Rover engineers were getting together and they said, so do we want to turbocharge this? Do we want to supercharge this? Or do we want to uh, make it a hybrid system? And thankfully someone said yes. <laughs> they said, yes, let's do all of those. Um, and it works. It works so good. The power delivery on this is incredible. Now, there may be some other SUVs that have significantly higher numbers, but this felt like those higher numbers. It was incredible. The delivery through that transmission was really good and down to the massive wheels and tires that this has. But it's been really, really good. I was impressed with it. Yeah, and I can see the turbocharger right down there, um, but it's, it's probably one of my favorite power plants because of just how good it's been able to deliver the power. Uh, as far as the alternative smaller engine, I don't know if I'd go that route because this is a big SUV and it didn't struggle. This did not struggle by any means to get this guy going. And whether you are from a stop, whether you were on the highway and needing even more speed and when you're off-road this is the way to go so if you're really going to be going off-roading and you want that you're going to want to need or you're going to need that extra power this is the route you go well let's go ahead and take a look at those wheels and tires we get down to the wheel and tire package and we don't really have to go down too much because uh yeah we have a big 20 inch wheel now typically when you're off-roading or have an off-road vehicle the wheels you don't want them to be that big because you want more side tire and sidewall on your tire doesn't matter in this case because you still have the massive 255 60 uh wrangler a uh, goodyear wrangler tire on this now they have a good amount of sidewall they still have a good amount of sidewall it's a big wheel and tire package very classic nothing super wow about the design but it's nice it's a simple design which works well with the Defender. Performance, 
yes. <laughs> Performance, yes. Off-road and on-road. Uh, because I have driven this off-road and the tires were great. And on the road, this is spectacular. The, it's so quiet. And the brakes on this are extremely good because it's not a small vehicle. So to bring this down to a halt was very easy in this. But it, it just works so well. It's super quiet. I wasn't fighting the wheel, you know, like you do with some off-road vehicles or off-road versions of a vehicle, uh, or when you have a massive wheel and tire package like this, it was extremely easy to drive, especially on a, on a long road trip that I did. Now, we can see here, we do have air suspension, and right now we are at the highest setting. This is the off-road. There's a ton of clearance here. There is a ton. And that's what makes this guy so awesome. You're able to really take this off on the road and, and on the road as well. It's, it's a really good package. I was extremely surprised with this. Well, uh, let's go ahead and see what we have on the side. We take a look at the side and it's totally Defender. That's what makes this so great. There's a lot of heritage to the Defender name, and with this design, it really, really did a good job of honoring that heritage. Now, we get started in the front, and we can see a little bit of that headlight just kind of peeking in here, which looks, again, one of my favorite cues with this. And we have this green color. This is amazing. If I knew that I was gonna be taking my Defender off-road to, you know, some treacherous parts, I think I'd go green. If it was gonna be more of a mall crawler, black. I mean, you have to go with a black Land Rover. It just looks, it, it, Bond. <laughs> James Bond is all I'll say. <laughs> so it just looks right. Uh, so we have also this nice, great little opening here in the Defender, on the Fender, the Fender, the, the Defender Fender. Yes, the Defender Fender. <laughs> so we have that. It's a nice little touch, looks great. Again, we have this at the highest setting right now. It looks really good. And again, you have so much clearance. And uh, you can see some of our, some of my colleagues had a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, there's some scuffs here. Um, yeah, you know, put it through its paces. Um, but it is the two door. I don't, I don't know if I was gonna, I didn't know if I was gonna like it, but I did. I really loved the way that this two-door looks compared to the four-door. Four-door is more practical for me, but ah, it's tough. I'd, I'd probably sacrifice <laughs> the, the, the practicality of it for the two-door because it just looks so good. And again, we have the top in white. It looks so good. Massive windows. I do love these little windows up here. They are so, so nice inside as well. It gives a lot of light. So even though it's a big vehicle, it feels nice and airy inside as far as, you know, the lighting in there, which is good. And yeah, you guys can see it's peaking a little bit. Full-size spare tire, we'll take a look at that. Let me go ahead and we'll do the keyless entry test. This was a little frustrating. So we do have wireless entry or keyless entry. Um, when I grab it and I pull, it does not unlock. Now, typically, now I don't typically grab with my right hand because I want to grab with my left hand and open up, except I have to grab with my right hand because the button is here. Yeah, it's, it's awkwardly placed there. So I am having to use my, if I use my left hand, I'm having to kind of go under, push the button to unlock and then pull open. It's a little unnatural. And, and again, so I'll lock it, this, doesn't feel as natural as it does me grabbing my left. Now you think, okay, great. On the other side, you could grab with your right, but you can't because the button is now on the left, on the right side. So it's literally both buttons are facing forward. So you're having to, again, do the under thing with your right hand to unlock it. <sighs> Small detail, but it was a little bit of annoyance. So I did see myself just using my key fob to go ahead and unlock it and I just pulled the handle. Now I'll go ahead and get in. Hopefully you guys can hear me. We'll go ahead and turn it on and we are going to go to the lowest setting.
And there you have it. Uh, this is actually the lowest setting. It's actually pretty low. And I used it when I was parking it in the garage, making sure that, you know, nothing up there got hit or anything really. Uh, so it does help with entering as well. It's significantly easier to, to you know, go into something that's this high as opposed to at the highest setting. Well, uh, let's go ahead and see what we have in the back. We get to the back and we can see some awesome design cues. I love these taillights and the turn signals. They just look so, so nice. And again, we have this really flat rear, um, <laughs> which looks good. That, that screams Defender. So again, a great design cue. I, I really, really love it. A um, couple of things, not sure if you guys can see. Again, but there is a camera up here. It's what I was talking to you guys about, that whole 360 view and just all these awesome, awesome angles that you have with the Defender. It's, it's so nice. Now, again, we have the nice big rear tire. Um, well, the spare tire in the rear, it is mounted to the tailgate. So I'll go ahead and open this guy up. And yeah, when you open it up, there's really not much space. Yeah, unfortunately. So there is very limited space with this. So you may want to look for a roof mounted uh, storage solution uh, if you're planning on using all the seats inside because you can actually put these down um, like you normally would in, in any other SUV, but it does give you a good fair amount of space. So I'll go ahead and drop those down and you do have space. What I do love about this is, and I'll take off this little thing, is they do have a rubberized mat here. So when I did put some boxes, again, just cardboard boxes, boxes filled with things, uh, I thought, oh man, they're gonna slide down, but that grip, that texture was actually really, really good in making sure that it didn't slide back. So I do love that. Another thing as well is you can lower this. Now it is already at the lower lowest height, but you can, you can bring it up or down to help with loading. So yeah you know, make the, make the best out of what you have. And again, we just have some really nice design cues here on the door with, with the exposed bolts uh, to have that. And overall, it's, it's a nice design. Again, just be ready that you're not gonna have much space. Well, uh, let's go ahead, close this off, and we'll take a look at the key fob. Unfortunately, there aren't many options with the key fob. Uh, yeah, the remote start is all done through their app. So it's a little bit of a letdown. I would like to have it on, on this. What was kind of cool, again, maybe a little gimmicky, but it's nice. I can see the use for it is there is a light switch, a light button here. So if you're on, on off-roading or you're in the woods and you just need some light, you don't have to unlock or lock. There is a dedicated light button, which is nice. Well, let's go ahead and go for a ride. You get into Defender 90 and it is amazing. It looks so good. <laughs> when, when I first test drove the, the larger four-door one, I got in and it was just unbelievable. First of all, let's talk about that door. That door just looks so good on the inside. Having the exposed bolts like that, it's so nice. It's such a utilitarian thing, but it's done with it's done with design. It's done with class. It's done with luxury. It's not just, hey, let's expose the bolts. It's, hey, let's expose the bolts and make it look beautiful. And that's what Land Rover has been able to do with the Defender. And yeah, so we, we take a look at the door really quick. And the materials, there's so many different materials, but they all work so well together. That is the biggest thing with some vehicles that I've driven is that they have all these different materials, but they don't go together. With this, they all go together. They look really, really good. So again, those that door with the with the exposed bolts look really great. Uh, just the materials, this kind of like neoprene color. It looks so so good, and it's made for that rugged feel and durability for 
you know, these materials because you're going to be taking this thing out on not the cleanest of things. So you want things that are going to clean easily. So you have that. Then we get over to the seats. These seats are incredibly comfortable. They are heated. Uh, I believe there is a cooled option as well uh, because the controls gave me a little hint at it. But either way, these are the heated seats and they work well. They work well and they really warm up fairly quickly and no complaints there. We had about 30 something degrees and I was like, okay, I get to actually try heated seats in Texas. <laughs> so I did and they were really, really good. Uh, very even distribution of the heat. It wasn't any hot spots. So, and, and again, it heated, it heated up the seat really fast. Yeah, that was tongue twister there. And yeah, uh, I did a really long road trip in this and no complaints. I was so comfortable. I was just, just enjoying my ride, enjoying the ride, really. We get over to the steering wheel and that's where this gets even better. This is probably one of my favorite steering wheels for a couple of reasons. First, it's got this like metal or plastic. It's, I don't know, but it's like textured material. It feels like metal. It, well, it, when you hit it, it taps like metal, but it's pla it's probably, it's most likely plastic, but it is one hard plastic. So it, it just feels really nice. The wheel itself is great, nice size. Now, my favorite thing about the wheel is the button on the left or the set of buttons on the left. The reason why is because the functions actually change. When you're not really in anything, they're the next track and you know answer the phone call. And when you press the middle button, the actual buttons change function. That's brilliant. Why, why do they have to be fixed button, fixed functions to the buttons? Why can't they just change? Yeah, it's, it's so smart. So I can press that and I can maneuver things, but I'm doing it all with this set of buttons. And that makes it great because I have a lot of function. I have a lot of function on my left hand and I don't have to deal with 30 million buttons <laughs> or having only two buttons that don't really help me with anything. So yeah, this was one of my favorite things about it where I was like, whoa, wait a minute, I can do multiple things with this side of the buttons. So, and we have your volume control, really nice little wheel, felt good on there. On the right side, you have your cruise control. It's not as fancy as the left side, but you have that. We get to the gauge cluster and it's all a digital screen which is great, looks nice, super clear. That is the biggest thing with Land Rover is their displays are extremely clear. They're clear, they're bright, they're sharp. They're really, really sharp. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can go into this and change all the different views that you have. You can even change the way that, that the gauge cluster looks. You can change it to, uh, instead of having one, uh, instead of having both, uh, kind of dials. You can have a one dial. You can have the full map on this. Uh, so we'll switch over to one dial, go over to the map so you can see the entire map. You can go to media. I was in media surprisingly for my road trip um, for a while because it just kind of put me at, uh, just kind of calmed me down and it was nice to see my media nice on there. But let's go ahead and go back to two dial. Nice and traditional sense. We have your tack and we have your speedometer. And the middle, Again, I was able to go ahead and just have my trip information, really good stuff in there, no complaints. Um, my favorite thing about this though, you can set this off uh, when you're in off-road modes, it will show you the power distribution, which is nice. We get over to the infotainment system and yeah, we can see that we have a nice little screen and we do have Apple CarPlay on this, that's what I've been using. And it's nice. Again, another crystal clear, really bright screen. No issues with even sun directly hitting it. It was extremely sharp. So I did love that. And there's tons of things here. What I love about this is that it's very easy, very, very direct as far as what those menus are. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, we have the cameras. Obviously, you, if we were going slow, we'd be able to see that. Um, when you're going slower though, it does give you the option of 
turning on the cameras. So it is a button. It's a little bit far out, <laughs> but there's a button nonetheless. Uh, the 4x4i, it's gonna go ahead and just give you off-road information, which is nice. This is what I was telling you is displayable in here, which is nice. It's nice to have that there. And I was even in the eco data mode while on my road trip to help me out and see where I can improve, which is nice. I mean, right now we have an 86% score, but you know, we're gonna be having a little bit fun. So I know that that is definitely gonna go down. But yeah, I mean, like I said, the colors on this are unbelievable. They're very welcoming. They're very pleasing to the eyes for an interface. So we'll go back to CarPlay and the Meridian speaker system that this has, it is so good. It is really loud. It is crystal clear. You have subwoofer control, separate subwoofer control, which is nice because sometimes the low set, you know, the low frequency function isn't as clear or isn't as really dis defined for a good punch. So you have the subwoofer, which is a nice feel to it. Then we come down here a little bit more and we have the shifter. Uh, it is an electronic shifter. So you're needing to shift it up for reverse back down for drive and yeah so i i kind of said it was a little tricky at first when i we first had the uh the other land rover and this the discovery but yeah i got used to it and it, it's fine it it's i'm better i'm better for it now <laughs> so we have that we come down here and this is basically your control center your command center so to speak and we have just basically all the functions that, or all the buttons that you'll really need when you're wanting to have some off-road fun and just some everyday uses as well so we do have at the top we have the hill descent um, the auto off button there we have your air suspension height yes so this does have the air suspension i can raise it so you don't only have three levels you have the off-road height you have your normal and you have your entry height so entry meaning you're getting into the car or into the land rover when it's you don't want it to be super high so and you can lock it at the lowest setting then we have your traction control we have your uh, basically your four low on this and we have your ac controls again very 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 good What's great about this is again, that multi-functioning input device. What I mean by that is if I wanna select, so right now you can see that it has for my temperature. So I can change the temperature of the AC, but when I press a button, it's gonna let me configure the program mode for you know whether it's rock, sand, uh, you know, eco mode and all that. But that's, that's what I'm talking about is like, it's just, and it's very obvious and very clear that when you press the button, it's gonna go ahead and light up and tell you, hey, use this knob to choose whatever setting you want. So it's a really, really good, um, you know, interface. It's a really good system. Again, it makes it so that you don't have to have a million buttons or having to go into a million menus to get to things. One little button and then you have a multi-functioning uh, wheel, so to speak. And same thing, and with the AC, as far as like the fan, you have that on the right side and, and it works like that. Now, one thing that I was kind of like, uh, that's kind of tough is the volume knob. The volume knob is really far out, but that's actually for your passenger because again, just use your steering wheel. I used it 100% of the times. Well, 99, except that one time that I went to go reach over and, and see if it worked. <laughs> that was really it. So we have that. Now we come a little bit back and we don't have a center console in the traditional way. That's because we have the bench seat in the front with the fold in the middle. So the, the seat in the middle does fold down to be your armrest for you and the passenger. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. The, now it does give you uh, six seats. So it, it does give you the function of six seats, but I, I wasn't, 100% sold on the comfortable aspect of kind of putting my arm here, but it wasn't even that. I think the biggest thing was the cup holders. The cup holders are not the best. They are extremely small in the sense that there's these like bulging, like rubber things that are sticking out in order to uh, grab the cup 
but when it grabs the cup, it really grabs the cup. So just be sure you're not using like a styrofoam cup because it'll probably dig into it and you're gonna have a spill in here. So yeah, cup holder wasn't the best for this, uh, but yeah. The other thing as well, because we're losing the, the, the center console with this, is there really wasn't a place for me to put my phone. There wasn't a place for me to put my phone other than the cup holder. And then it's just kind of awkwardly there. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't a big fan of this. It was, <laughs> I bet if I had a buddy and I said, Hey, you want to come along? We open it up and he's the human cup holder. Yeah. <laughs> he, they wouldn't be happy, but y you would definitely have better cup holding option or better cup holding performance, I guess you could say. But yeah, the that's this then because this is the two door uh your rear passengers have to get in through your front doors because there's no back doors and it was tough now i'm not saying it's not that i'm a big guy but because i am but it was just it wasn't very much space even when i'm pulling the seat all the way forward it's like getting into a supercar you have to find the way i kind of found the way to get in and out of it very easily. And then when I got out of it, my shoe got stuck. So I had to sacrifice the shoe to get out because it got caught. Yeah, so it's a little tough to get into the back. But once you figure it out, it'll be fine because when you sit back there, there is so much space. Your rear passengers are gonna have as much space as you do up front. And let me tell you, there is a lot of space up front. So yeah, once they get in, they're probably not gonna wanna get out. With that being said though, when they are in the back and you have five people, even six with this guy up, as you can see, yeah. <laughs> um, you're not gonna have space for luggage. You're really not. It is extremely tiny in the back. So just be aware if you're going to be hauling people, you're probably going to go with a roof option, some, some carrier above. So be ready for that. Uh, speaking of above, this actually has now, typically I'm not a guy, uh, someone that opens up the sunroofs in my reviews because nah, I'm not a big sunroof guy, but this was nice. This was nice touch to, to it. It has like a cloth. It reminds me of the Volkswagen buses. I don't know if older older uh land rovers had that but it is like the cloth on top which is nice it was really really nice to have that up there it was actually surprisingly quiet too uh i had another car that had something similar or had a had a sunroof and it was just extremely noisy at any speeds but yeah we have that nice little added touch only thing is when you want to close it, you got to hold it down. So there's no auto close for the sunroof or the roof thing, whatever you want to call this, <laughs> but it, it's really nice. I did love that. And of course you have those windows in the back, the little safari looking windows in the back. Those look so nice. It's such a design, such a beautiful design touch to it. It works so good. I do love the way that that looks. It's probably one of my favorite little design aspects of the Defender. Now let's talk performance. We get under the hood and we have a 3.0 liter inline six, cranking out 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. Now, this thing is insane. You're probably, you're starting to think, okay, 3.0 liter cranking out that much power, what does it have? Supercharger? turbocharger is it a hybrid well the answer is yes it actually has all three so it actually has a turbocharger it has a supercharger and it has an electric you know electric mile hybrid system it's insane it's insane and when i actually when i actually tried it out this guy really gets going it's insane how big this thing is and it just goes one of the things that's that's incredible that i really loved about this is the pedal now typically in a 
let's switch it to sport mode. <laughs> now, typically in a, in a vehicle, the gas pedal and the brake pedal are okay. And you'll, you'll be able to tell when some, you, you won't like it if it's really bad, but when you, when it's really good, it's just as good. You know, it's really good and, and you really love it. And that's what this is. The pedal is really responsive and the brakes feel really good. There's so much like grab to this and the feedback you're getting from both the accelerator and the brake pedal is incredible. Same thing with the steering wheel. And again, this is a, you know, I'm kind of treating this like a little sports car right now through these twisty roads, but I've taken this off-road. I've taken the bigger four-door model off-road and it is extremely capable. There was no doubt about it. I had no issues with it. Actually, I had one, but that was more of my fault because there is a lot of drive train or, or drive modes in this. I was going up a hill and I had it on rock and you have to make sure that you change or just make sure you read the manual and understand what's going on because I was going uphill, but it activated the hill descent. So it, it panicked a little bit, but once we turned that off, dear God, this was easy to climb and it was a steep climb too. So it, the performance is there the height adjustment is incredible this thing gets so so high and it actually reads it out to you on here as far as what your height or your dimensions are which is nice because i just got a garage yes finally have a garage and i you know i was able to measure or see okay vehicle set in normal height it gives me those measures if i increase it it gives you that height and the approach angle the clearance underneath it's just all these cool things all this tech stuff that is functional but it's so user friendly as well uh, again you'll have to read a little bit but not a problem and once you get though into your into the groove it is so good i mean oh <laughs> yeah the brakes are so good no complaints there. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a supercharger, turbocharger, and hybrid system all working. Yeah. It, oh, there's a deer. Oh, deer. <laughs> it was interesting. It was saying what's coming up because I can hear it because it sounds really good. And once it saw those, that front end, it felt intimidated. It's like, okay, let me not go there. <laughs> this thing is so good. It, you know, the, the looks I've been getting from people, it's like, what is that? That's different. It, or, oh, look, it's a Defender. It's not your typical SUV. And that's what I love about this. Now, the price tag, you know, at 66,000, I don't mind it. I really don't mind it. I think it's for what it, what this being the first edition model, it's trimmed out. It's got all these great features. It, it has all these great finishes. It is the two door. Um, yeah, I would probably like the four door, but the price I think maybe go, maybe goes a little too high, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would, uh, I'd probably go two door because it just looks so nice. And typically I'm a four door, you know, I like the four doors because it's easier, but I'd probably sacrifice my, my passengers in the back and mm, cargo. Yeah. I'd go four door. Yeah. I'd have to go four door or just look for roof compartment or something, you know, storage, roof storage so solutions. But this thing has been amazing. This has been this has been one of my favorite off-road vehicles because it's worked so well off-road and on the road it is so good so yes it's got mall crawler status but it also has you know sahara status it has you know uh, the the tr most treacherous of terrains status <laughs> it can do that with no issue well guys, I have had a blast in the Land Rover Defender. 
yeah, I really want this. This is really high up there in the want list. And remember, find the right gear. See ya.